This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 249, The Constant, by Nighar Fanuni of nigharfanuni.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, a very happy Thursday to you. This is where I act as your narrator and read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs out there. And this week, we're covering personal development. So I'm taking a bit of a break from discussing nutrition and fitness, well, a short break. Tomorrow's Q&A, we'll come back to the topic of fitness especially, so definitely listen to that one. But as we know, personal development, stress management, staying positive, expressing gratitude, these are all important for health and wellness. So it's important we keep those things in mind as well. I'm gonna keep this intro nice and short for you, so let's jump right in and hear today's post and start optimizing your life. The Constant by Neghar Fanuni of negharfanuni.com. I don't know how you do it all. I hear this a lot. It usually comes from friends and colleagues and sometimes even readers in reference to the plethora of responsibilities and obligations on my plate. Work, school, kids, training, writing, etc. How do I juggle so many tasks? How do I manage to keep it all under control? My response is always the same. Neither do I. A very good friend recently enlightened me to the harsh reality that I am, in fact, an overachiever. I didn't want to face it, but sadly it's true. Because I dread mediocrity, and perhaps because I grew up with a resolute desire to please my father, I had the unfortunate habit of overextending myself and biting off more than I can chew. How do I juggle it all? Well, sometimes, or most of the time, I don't. I try to be Wonder Woman, and often I fail. The truth is, there are days when I'm so tired and overwhelmed that I literally want to cry. There are nights when I wish the clock would stop, so I continue studying, yet somehow still enjoy a good amount of sleep. And worse yet, there are times when I get so frustrated, exhausted, and irritable that I take it out on the very thing that is the driving force behind my motivation to excel, my son. Last week, I had a time-consuming project due in one of my college classes. In anticipation of my weekend trip to California, I wanted to get as much schoolwork done as possible so I wouldn't have to take it with me on my travels. This meant late nights and lots of hustling, no time to write or even clean my apartment. On one of these particularly busy days, I picked up Isaac to find that he hadn't eaten the chicken I gave him for lunch. Not one bite. Although Isaac appreciates and enjoys healthy food, he is quite the picky eater these days, which is unbelievably frustrating. In that moment, I felt as though I had had enough of his food issues. The stress of school, work, and impending travel all came to an unpleasant head. Let's just say that my tone was a little too firm, even for me, and I was not happy with myself. Because he is so mature and well-mannered for his age, I often expect him to make grown-up decisions. Alas, Isaac is still just a kid, and it breaks my heart to see sadness in his innocent face. Being a single mother is a tough job, but not just because of the obvious rigors, but because of the single-parent guilt. I am far from Wonder Woman, although I wish that I could adorn the costume and instantly channel her powers. Every time I find myself delving out discipline due to stress and frustration, I am overcome with single-parent guilt and deep regret, void of the superhero courage I aim to possess. Stress is a sneaky SOB. It builds gradually, waiting patiently, imperturbably. You think you're handling everything just fine until the moment when you're not. It didn't come out of nowhere. It's been waiting for the right time to make its entrance, anticipating its opportunity to infect your perfectly orchestrated life. It's pernicious and detrimental to both your physical and mental health, but it can be restrained. All you need is a constant. The constant is the thing that grounds you, keeping you attached to reality despite the tumultuous circumstances you may encounter. The constant is the thing that centers you when everything feels out of control. When you're at your breaking point, overwhelmed, overextended, and you feel like you could scream, the constant calms you. The constant brings you back to your purpose, your true self. Your constant can be as simple as a mantra, a photo, a physical act, or even a particular scent. There are things that tend to calm me, simple pleasures that make me feel at peace, such as the smell of honeysuckle or fresh brewed coffee, listening to The Heart of Life by John Mayer, or practicing yoga. There are several easily accessible avenues for attaining peace, but there is only one constant. My constant, of course, comes courtesy of the thing I love most in this world, Isaac. In the months before kindergarten, Isaac had just begun learning to read and write beyond simply recognizing letters of the alphabet. 
One day, while seated in my office at the gym, he wrote cat three times on a piece of paper without being prompted. You see, we had read the cat in the hat several times and gone over how to spell simple three-letter words, but I had never before witnessed him write anything that resembled an actual English word. I was beaming with pride. This was one of those moments that remind a stressed out single mother just how lucky she is to have such a wondrous gift. This was a moment I would never forget. Of course, I realize to most, this wouldn't seem extraordinary in any particular way. The kid wrote cat, so the F what? For me, however, it was a glimpse into my child's ever expanding curiosity, aptitude, and ambition. I carry this tiny piece of seemingly unremarkable paper in my wallet everywhere I go. I even have a picture of it as a screensaver on my phone. I keep it to remind me of how something so simple can evoke multitudinous joy. I look at it often to help me find balance, purpose, and peace. To someone else, this scrap of paper might be garbage, but the cat is my constant. The cat reminds me to breathe, to shirk the negativity of stress, and simply live in this moment right now. My constant has had such a profound effect on me that I encourage you to identify your own constant. What is the thing, tangible or otherwise, that restores your balance and repositions you on your chosen path? You just listened to the post titled The Constant by Neghar Fanuni of negharfanuni.com. The idea of a constant always reminds me of Inception. Leonardo DiCaprio had that spinning top to keep him grounded, to know what reality was versus the dream. And after reading Miss Fununi's post, I realized that I actually have a constant, I just never realized it or thought of it in this way. For me, music is my constant. It always makes me feel better. It could be 80s music, it could be punk rock, it could be heavy metal, whatever. It just gets me out of my state of mind and puts me in a more positive state of mind. Now, when it comes to music, by the way, There were studies that were done a while back that said, if you want to feel more relaxed, you have to listen to classical music. Don't get me wrong, I like classical and I listen to it pretty often actually. But if you don't like it, if there's music you don't like, you don't have to listen to it to make you feel better. What we're learning instead is, listen to the music that makes you happy. Doesn't have to be classical. Okay, so that was a tangent. But I have a feeling you already have a constant in your life something that you go to in your head or that you look at or that you do whenever you feel overwhelmed or distressed. Sometimes it's not very productive, like watching TV, playing on your phone, drinking, drug use. Those wouldn't be as adaptive as we'd like because those potentially could harm health. But I'm sure you have other constants, things that are more productive that you go to. Find those, use them more often. And again, so long as it's not doing you or someone else any harm, use it to make you feel better. Now, before I head out, just a quick reminder that we're doing a book giveaway to someone random on our mailing list in just two days. To be in those raffles, make sure you're on our weekly newsletter at oldpodcast.com. All right, I'm gonna keep it short. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow where we'll come back to the idea of fitness on another Q&A episode and where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, Come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.